found we're we're still getting used to this new equipment and it's getting used to us and we're just thanking god for this time that we can come together we praise god um as uh we just trust him and believe him for what he is about to do and what he is doing and and i'm just grateful to him for all that he's done and uh, let me just put this up here really quick if i can get my computer to cooperate and i can and we thank him for everything and uh, we just praise god as we start a new uh, a new day here and a new season and we just appreciate everything that he's doing here at this place welcome to ft church we thank you for being here uh, my name is pastor john perez along with my wife dr paula we are the servant leaders for this time and this season and this place and before we get started let's open up in a word of prayer so wherever you are if you're driving, pull over. Uh, if you're at home, give us a moment to just honor God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify your wonderful name. Father, we thank you for just coming together today. That God, that you chose this day that we can come together and we can come and glorify your name. Father, we raise up all of these situations, all of these concerns, all of these issues, all of these burdens. God, we just want to discuss them with you this morning. Lord, our families are not where they need to be. Our hearts are not where they need to be. Long, We long for you, Lord, today, and we need you more than ever before. Father, we pray for every family, every concern, every issue. We still left up, oh God, this little baby called Journey. And we pray, God, that you will cover her and keep her today. We thank you for everything. We thank you for those that are here, those that are on their way, those that are watching us, and those that will replay it later. And God, listen to your word. We thank you for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can have your seats. We thank God for being here. We're trying out some new things, and, and uh, we've uh, changed where we where we speak, we've changed where the cameras are, we've changed the speakers, and we're getting used to everything. So just bear with us as we get adjusted to everything that we've got. We praise God. We thank him. I just thank God for traveling mercies. Dr. Paul and, and I were, were out, um, just turned down the main a little bit, and uh, we're out of town, and we were able to make it back safely, so we thank God for that. And uh, we just praise God that we are here and we're safe and we're back in the house of God. And uh, it was a long week, tiring week, but the great thing is, is that God kept us through the week. And that was more important to me than anything else. And today, let's see if I can get all my facts and figures together. So today we start a new series called As Seen on TV. Pastor, what in the world is that? Well, it's As Seen on TV. What we're going to talk to you about this month is a topic that I've been, I've been struggling with because, and I think a lot of us do, what we take in through these eyes really affect how we go about the day. And we've got children that we've got to be careful of because they're watching things. We've got adults that are watching things that shouldn't be watching things. And it really could mess with your head. But we don't think about it. Think about the choices you have every day. You've got cable TV. You've got Hulu. You've got Netflix. You've got Paramount Plus. You've got Prime Video. You've got so many choices and so many different ratings. But I want to give you God's word, what he says about it. And let's get started with his word. And it says this. Matthew 6 22 and 23, I don't have 
I didn't get a chance to pull them up and put them on the, on the live screen. But let me read them in your hearing. It says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? And then I want to touch on this during this conversation this month. It says, can a man take fire into his bosom and his clothes not burn? Mother Brown, I think that's a pretty hard thing. There's no way you could take all this junk in, Deacon Mason, and not be affected. Then it says here in Mark 7, 21, it says, for, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, and murders. Think about what your kids are watching, and then think about what you're watching. The last one we're going to be talking about this month is this. If, you, if thy right eye offend thee, then pluck it out. Cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that, on, that only that thy members should perish, but not the whole body should be cast to hell. So I wanted to give you some idea of, as seen on TV. Look, I, I'm seeing some stuff that our kids should never be watching. I'm seeing some things that our kids should not be at, at, uh, shown. I'm seeing some things that we should not even expose our kids to. And we're, we're letting it happen, and we shouldn't be. So, Mother Brown, I decided that I think I, want, I wanted to talk about it a little bit because I think it's affecting us emotionally, spiritually, educationally, and foundationally. So when you look at all of these things, I said, if it's affecting what I look at on TV, how is it affecting everybody else? So as seen on TV, I wanted to talk to you about it. But then, Mother Brown, I, I wanted to set the stage this month to talk about the eye itself. I wanted to give a little education. See, all the different parts of your eye work together to help you. First, the light passes through the cornea. Then the cornea is shaped like a dome and bends the light to help you, your eye to focus. Some of, the light, some of the lights enter the eye through an opening called a pupil. Then the iris is the colored part. Next, the light passes through the lens. Then there's a retina. All of these work in unison. But then there's a spiritual eye. And my concern is that we're watching too many things that are adversely affecting us. And then I, I saw something, Sister Mason, one of, the, one of the scientists said that it could take a child up to six months to get rid of what the image they saw on TV. Good, bad, or indifferent. And then I heard, I read in, the, in preparation, it said, a child by the time is 18 will have seen 200,000 violent images on TV. 200,000 image, violent images on TV. Up to 18. And then we're letting ourselves be exposed to some of these things. Look, I remember when I was growing up, I was the remote control. Mom and dad said to change the channel, we had to get up and change it. If the channel broke, we got the pliers, deep, and we changed the channel. If we needed to tune in, we had the rabbit ears, or we were the rabbit ears. Hey, lean to the left, Junior. I can't see. Lean to the right. Junior, I can't see. We'd put the aluminum foil on the, on the end of the antenna to bring in the signal, right? We didn't have all this fancy stuff. All we had was 2, 4, 7, and 11. But man, when HBO came in, changed the world. When Showtime came in, changed the world. When YouTube came in and your children can go on a device 24-7 and access everything they ever want to access with no parental control. How are we affecting the brains of these children? Well, there used to be a saying that said, the TV will rot the brains of your child. Well, I, I believe it still does. And it was funny because on the way home last night from the airport, they were doing this piece on the old sitcoms on CNN. And they were talking about I, the old black and white, I love Lucy's. Today, it's not the black and white. It's the color scenes. It's the, all these scenes that we're being exposed to. See, 
these brain images go in through the eyes. So if you, if you let your child be babysat by some of this stuff, it adversely affects what they do and how they see it. And then I, I know that nobody wants to talk about Mickey and Minnie, but look at what Disney puts out. Everything has witchcraft. Everything. It doesn't matter what I watch. Disney, somebody has got a witch or a warlock or something. And then we put our kids in front of it, and it's okay. Or we let them read Harry Potter, and it's okay. It's not okay. So we would rather have them read Harry Potter than the Bible because the Bible, we figure, eh, they're just going to, it's not as entertaining. It's life. It's what's going to keep them alive. But what choices are we making as we go through this? I, I want to talk about choices. Listen to what David said in Psalm 101 and 3. When David was dealing with Bathsheba, here's what he said. He said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Well, Deke, I think it was a little bit too late. Think about it. He had a choice that day of turning off and moving on into war, but he decided to be captivated by a reality TV situation called Bathsheba. How is this affecting us as what we see on TV? I, I like what the Catholics came up with. They said that we've got to take custody of our eyes. The idea was what we must take custody of our eyes, take control of what we see. This was there to attempt not. Look, I'm not trying to, to, to be the moderator in your house. But I am trying to tell you that there's some things you need to run away from. Look, a man cannot take fire into his bosom and not be burned. If you watch a rated R movie, it will adversely affect you. How much of the F word can you take? How much of all these words can you take and not have it in your head and not have your kids repeat it? And then when your kids repeat it, then you slap them and they say, well, where did you hear it? Mom, that TV show you were watching. And then what are you going to do? Slap yourself? A little bit too late. You planted them in front of it. And now it's okay. I remember when my mom got saved, she had to be delivered from reading those old Harlequin novels. And if anybody's ever read them, whoo, they made a soap opera look like PG. But thank God she got delivered. It's what we read. It's what we study. It's what we get in front of. Look, here's some, here's some things, and we're going to be talking about it through the course of the month. TV ratings as they're put out. TVY, all children can watch it. That means everybody that's here can watch it. Then there's TV up to year seven, intended for children of up to seven. Best suited for children who know the difference between real life and make-believe. How many of our children know the difference between real life and make-believe? I think our children now are more educated than they've ever been before because we're exposing them to things they shouldn't be. But look, the one that really bothers me is this. TV 14, it says, parents strongly cautioned, intended for children of ages 14 and older to, in the company of an adult, possibly containing intense, suggestive dialogue, strong coarse language, intense sexual situations, an intense file. Remember what I said. By the time a child is 18, he will have already consumed 200,000 violent images. Then the one we see most of today, TVMA, intended for adults who may be unsuitable for children under 17, possibly contains crude, indecent language, explicit sexual activity, or graphic violence. I'll, I'll tell you what happened. I went into a movie with my two kids, Matt and Katie. And I saw the rating. I said, okay, we'll try it. Sister Mason, I, walked, I paid good money. I walked out of the movie. 
I said, we're not staying here. Now, they were mad. I said, too bad. I walked out, Deacon Mason, because I wasn't willing to expose my children to that. When I, I said, no way. But how many of us will walk out of a movie? How many of us would walk out of a play? How many of us would walk out of these situations and not entertain what we see that's coming into our eyes? Remember what God's word said. Let me, let me, just in case you're joining me late, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light is, is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Now, I love the writer here, and Matthew said, if therefore the light that is in you is dark, how great is the darkness? If all that you see is black, if all that you bring in is darkness, guess what you are? Remember what the saying says, you are what you eat? Well, if that's all you consume. Listen, if you go to McDonald's seven days a week and have a Big Mac, you're going to look like a Big Mac after a while. If all you do is eat chicken nuggets and french fries, you're going to look, your, blood, your cholesterol levels are going to be through the roof, right? The doctor's going to put you on Lipitor. He's going to try to bring it down. But Sister Mason, how do we control what we consume on TV? How do we control what we consume on our, on our, on our phones? How do we control what we consume on the iPad? They're saying in everything I've read that you shouldn't even give a child a phone. Shouldn't even give them an iPad, but we give them the iPad to entertain them. But do we put the controls so that they can't accidentally hit something they shouldn't? I remember when I was driving, when we were learning how to drive in high school, the, they used to have, the instructor had a brake in case you were swerving off the road. He had a brake that could stop you from crashing. What's the brake that we have from consuming all of this material. Look, I, I, I can't, I remember when I had it, well, I'm dating myself, but since Georgia, I had, I had a, an, oh, those old car phones, right? I used to work for one of the companies and I had it installed in my car. Well, I, I taught Mac colors. Green is for go, red is, red is stop, right? I said, Matt, when a call comes in, hit green. When a call's ended, you hit red. Listen, he was learning how to turn it on a phone and on, on and off a phone by five years old, right? But that was the game that we played to keep him entertained because the phone was right in the front. And then he sat in the back and the cord was long enough, but then he started dialing some people he shouldn't have been dialing. Oh, boy, was that a mess. Ma'am, I'm so sorry. Click. My son got a hold of the phone. Then he calls 911. Sir, I said, oh, sorry, it was my son. It was an accident. Don't send out the National Guard, please. But if you're full of darkness, then how great is your darkness? Look, I, I wanted to use this as a barometer of where I want to talk about this month. And we're going to break down the PG-13. We're going to break down the rated R. We, I, I don't need to go to rated X because you know what? Everything, everything they're, they're feeding it to you anyway. You know, when I was growing up, George Carlin, a, a famous comedian, put out an LP. Yeah, an old record. I'm dating myself. But he said the seven things you can't say on TV. Guess what? All those seven things you can say on TV. You can say them all. You know, one thing I found that, you know, is this. So a rated R movie or any movie takes about two to three years before it, before it will come back to TV. Right? About two to three years. Now. Here's what they do. You can watch it on demand when it comes to Fox or some of these other channels. If you're watching it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they bleep all the bad words. You wait till 8 o'clock, they let it run. If you watch it on demand, you can hear the whole thing. So they control the way they feed it to you depending on the time of day. 10 o'clock? Everything you ever wanted to know and you're afraid to ask. Our kids watch that, that, that Marvels thing or DC Deadpool with Ryan Reynolds. It's got more words that you don't want your kids to say in a single 30-minute clip than I've heard in probably 
all of my life. But is this how we want to raise a generation? Is this the way you want your kids? Do you want your kids saying? Listen, I found it. Well, I wouldn't say them in my mother's presence. I'd say them at school. If somebody called me that, I'd call it right back. Then I went home and anything. No, nah, mom, we're good today. We behave. If she ever knew half the stuff I said, I'd be a dead man. Whew, thank God I'm still alive. But my question becomes this. How do we control it? We can't control ourselves. How do we control it? We can't control ourselves. Is it bad to turn the thing off? Is it bad to go do something else? Look, our kids don't even know what fresh air feels like and tastes like because they're too busy on their phone. Look, I want you to look at, go into a restaurant when you leave here today. Here's what you're going to see on the table. A fork, a knife, a spoon, a plate, and a phone. There's no conversation. Parents are texting the children in front of themselves in front at the table. They're not talking to them. They're sending emojis and, and sending them pictures when they're sitting right here. Just watch. Look, I was at, I was at my, Paula and I, were, Dr. Paula and I were in a conference all week. I had to moderate two days, Deke, and I'm watching everybody. Presentations are being made. You know what they're on? Their phone. Their phone. They were on their phone all day, every day, six times on Sunday. Why? Because this thing is an addiction. Now, I'll tell you what my wife did to me. Boy, was it hard. But did it work? Here's what happened. We went on a cruise, and my wife said, you're locking your phones in the safe. Whew. You are locking your phones in the safe. Really? You are locking your phones in the safe. Now, here was, my, here was the two choices. Either the phone goes overboard or I go overboard. Which one was it going to be? I chose safety. I'll lock it up because I'd like to use it when I get off. It Honestly, it took me probably 48 hours just to get the withdrawal out of my system. Because you're used to having this thing in your hand, right? It's an appendage, right? It's a part of who we are now. It's our part of our identity. What kind of phone you have? Well, I got a 13 plus max. Well, what do you got? I got a Google Pixel. It's who we are, right? It's what we are. It's attached at your hip. It's everywhere, right? So that means if you have your phone, you have every movie you ever wanted to watch. You know, and it's funny because we say, hey, you bring your Bible with you every day because now you have a phone. My problem is you bring the devil too because you got every movie you ever wanted to watch and you were afraid to ask. Look, I remember <coughs> we, we, we had talked to some young, young people and, and we, at, we went to go pick them up for church, Mother Brown. And the mother says they're not ready. They were up until 3 o'clock in the morning watching YouTube. Who's the parent? And who's the child? But yeah. We have become a slave to this stuff. Now, here's what I had to do to safeguard this. And Bishop Sheard hit on this on Thursday night. How are we guarding our anointing on our life? Mother Brown, he broke it down. I mean, he really said we have to guard this thing called our anointing on our life. So here's what I had to do, Deke. During the pandemic, 
I had to go back to watching the old Westerns, right? Because that's what I love. I'm a John Wayne. I mean, I can watch that stuff. Why? Because they didn't have all these other words that you can't say, right? They didn't have them all, right? I've had to screen my own screen time. Let me say that one more time. I've had to screen my own screen time. So, yes, I have multiple ways of streaming, but it takes me, I would say, it takes me probably to watch one movie, to find one movie, it takes me probably about 15, 20 minutes. Because i got to go through a myriad of junk, Sister Clarissa, to find out something that I can intake. If I can't intake it, I ain't watching it. If I can't put it in my system and feel good about it, I can't watch it. But today, we don't care. If it's rated R, oh, pastor, but all the best movies are rated R. I know that. They do it on purpose. And, and then I love this Mother Brown. And then the actor gets up there and saying, oh, I'm blessed. God, you blessed me to win this Academy Award. You swore and said everything but in the movie, but now you're giving God credit. Famous actor said this, Mother Brown. He goes to church. He said this, and I'm paraphrasing. All I'm doing is reading a script. And that's how he justifies saying what he says or doing what he does. I'm just reading a script. It's part of my job. Well, let me say this. If you got saved today and you were a drug pusher, am I going to still say it's okay to be a drug pusher tomorrow? I'm going to tell you you got to change your life and walk away from that and come clean. So what makes it, why do I have, why do I give an Academy Award actor a pass when I won't give the alcoholic a pass? See, we, we put people on different levels when it comes to these issues. The reality of life is this. Sin is sin. It's as simple as it can be, but we don't do it that way. Ah, he's an actor. He can say all those words. It's just a script. Okay, so if you read the Bible, that's a script for your life. I don't see, any, I don't see anything in there that I can't say. But we don't look at it that way, Deacon Mason. We continue to absorb all of this junk into our lives. And then when they come to me and ask me where the problems are, I have to start asking them the questions. Okay, so what have you been watching lately? Who have you been talking to lately? What have you been reading lately? See, when I start finding out all these layers, I can find out where all the problems are. I don't have to go that far. I really don't have to go that far. Where you been hanging out? On the corner of Smith and Wesson. Well, I know you got a problem. I know you got a problem. Well, what do you like to watch? Oh, you know, I like to watch all that stuff. Oh, really? How do you think that affects you? What kind of video games do you like to do or play? All the ones that are rated for mature audiences only. So give me the ones you like, and I can't name them all because I don't know them, but think about them all. Everything that has violence in it is the ones that our children are addicted to. And because those images are fixated in their mind, again, the data that drove me to this question and to this study was this. Over 200,000 images our children will see of violence. And we're not there to help. Look, I can't control what my son watches in college, but I could control what he watched at home. I can't control what you watch at home because I'm not there. But that's the word called integrity, right? These are the things that I'm concerned about. These are the things that if, if it's affecting me, it, 
I can't be by myself, Sister Mason. I can't be by myself because I'm concerned about a generation that will have an iPhone that basically will they'll just tap their wrist and they'll, the image will come up because that's where we're going. We already have the Apple Watch. All we need, you can FaceTime on everything right now. Soon, the audio will be displaced for video. That's where we're going. They're going to implant the chip. And you're just going to tap your wrist. And they've already given us, look, when you, when you go, to your, go to your favorite Starbucks, all you got to do is tap from your credit card. It's already been created. Soon you just put your wrist right there and you've paid for everything. It's already here. Corporations are already embedding chips. It's already here. Now, this is not a part of my message, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. It's already here. I, I, I went into Starbucks in, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, you, you don't have to insert it anymore. Just tap. So we've got the tap. We've got the, we've got the video. We've got the derogatory messages, the raunchy stuff on TV. And we don't say enough is enough. Think about it this way, Sister Clarissa. They say that Christians are one of the biggest voting blocks, right? Well, and in, in, in when it comes to all these things. But, yeah, we're the least amount of people to say anything unless it's about abortion. Abortion, we, woo, we went crazy. Well, how about this stuff that our children are, are taking in? How about the content that's being put out there? What do we say? Do we tell Disney, hey, we're tired of your junk and we're not going to buy it anymore? No, we just buy more. Mickey's loaded, right? Mickey's a billionaire, okay? Mickey's a billionaire. Yep, Mickey's a billionaire. And we just keep on making him that because it's okay. Ah, oh, Mickey's innocent. Check the message. Check the message. Look, All unrighteousness is sin. So if I'm here to pick on LGTBQ, I got to look at the adulterer as well. The fornicator, the adulterer, the homosexual, all of that is sin. I'm not going to isolate one thing. That's not my job. But I'm telling you that everything's a sin. Look at the Bible and read the word. It's there. Those that are effeminate, read the word. It's there. I'm not going to pick, but look, when these images now, when, you know, think about it. My wife and we we're, 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 we're listening to the, to the piece. It went from leave it to beaver to what we got today. It went from, like she said, the, you know, the first black woman to be on TV, Julia, right? To like, now I got Julia and I got Susie living together. And that's okay. And we, have, we, we do it. Our children are called, be called what? Binary fluid and that's okay and and you know what disney's following suit every corporation is falling into line with this acceptance and then when and then when the church says something oh we hate you jesus loves everybody what he hates is the sin that's all he hates he doesn't hate you as an individual because look how he dealt with all of those issues. What did he tell the mans that were that were brought out the woman who was the adulterer? Hey, you without sin cast the first stone. I can go into any church, Sister Georgie, and say the same thing. Look, you without sin, you cast the first stone. You know how many people are walking away? 99%. Nine out of 10 are saying, whoop, I'm going right to my seat. I don't care if you're wearing Giorgio Armani or you're wearing Louis Vuitton, or you're wearing your Prada shoes. That doesn't matter to me. What matters to God is your heart. And if you are absorbing this thing, the Bible says, how much darkness can you take without it adversely affecting who you are? So I'm trying to help you because this has helped me. Mother Brown, I had to get to the point where there's a lot of junk on TV I just can't watch. 
I can't take it anymore because I'm guarding my anointing. I'm guarding my insides because if I don't do it, if I don't screen my screen time, who will? Now, Deke, many people are going to watch this and say, oh, he was picking on LGBTQ. No, I'm not. Because we love you. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves you more, but he also wants you to know that God wants to see you one day in heaven. And in order for that to happen, you've got to accept him as Jesus Christ, as your personal savior, so that you can one day meet him face to face. Now, that goes for you that are cheating on your wife. That goes for you that are cheating on everything. That goes for you that are doing everything that you're not supposed to do. That goes to you too. I'm not going to just isolate a individual sin like we're doing in this country. Because look, we believe that a baby is at conception. The government can believe whatever they want to believe. But I'm telling you what I believe. And if you commit murder, that's what you've done. Now, I know what CNN is saying left. I know what Fox is saying right. I'm telling you down the middle. And you, we are absorbing all of these opinions on either one of these two networks. And I don't believe any of them. Just Georgia, I don't believe CNN. And I don't believe Fox. I don't believe anybody. You know who I believe? Jesus. Because, see, I've got to be able to weed through their junk, their leftist and right communication to get the truth. And I can't find the truth on their channels. I can't even find the truth on TBN. Oops, I said it. And I'm okay with it because they've sold out for this. And when you start selling out for this, then you're not selling out for God. I can't even take in their programming. Huckabee, no B. No way. Can't take it. But yet you can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. I'm going to call myself a saint of God. Throw that Christian word out the window. I'm going to call, I'm a saint of God. That's what I believe I am. That's what I know I am. And if I continue to take in your poison, it will affect my body. Look, would I feed my child rat poison? No. But I allow them to ingest what they ingest, and I think it, they say it's okay. Oh, they're just a child. They don't know the difference between a left and a right. They're still trying to learn how to tie their shoes, and I'm letting them take in all this junk. Through this next couple weeks, we're going to break down how, just like I had to lock my phone on that cruise, how do we lock, lock down ourselves to stop absorbing some of this stuff? Because I believe that it just didn't affect me during this pandemic. It just didn't affect me all of the years of my life. Look, I, I used to work with a bunch of guys that, Saying the F word was just part of their everyday diet. diet. I get on the phone and F this and F that and that, 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 that. They didn't care who I was, what I was, where I was. That was just to them. That was just like saying good morning. Good day. And until you hang up the phone, they ain't never going to get the message. Now, I thought in the beginning that I could watch these movies, these rated R movies. I'm telling on myself. But you know what? You can't take all that junk. Yes, it's your favorite actor. Yes, so what? What are you going to tell Jesus? I love... I might going to start mentioning names because they'll probably bleep me off. So let me just not. But I think that we've got to understand there's a rating that we've got to hold ourselves to. Not the TV ratings, not the movie ratings. What rating are you holding yourself to? 
Are you holding yourself to be a saint? Or are you holding yourself to be like everybody else? And only you can, only you can truly know where you stand today. I can't. I don't know what's going on in your house. I don't know what you take in. I don't know what you think is funny. And I don't know what you think is sad. Now, there's some crazy stuff I think is funny. I really do. My kids, and I'll finish it here. My kids and I used to enjoy just going into the city and just doing people watching. And we'd, we'd sit there, we'd make up stories about the people walking by, what they did for a living, depending on what they wore. Sister Claritza, three-piece suit, I probably a banker. That one, I don't know what she was, but let's keep on moving. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And keep, you know, but it was for us, it was that, it, it was a game, right? None of this is a game anymore, Deacon Mason. I've got to be able to really rightly divide the word of truth for the people to understand that this is real life. And what you take in through these eyes can adversely affect the rest of your life. Again, let me say it to those that are listening. By the time your child is 18, they will have absorbed 200,000 violent images. And I believe that that number is greater now. I really believe that number is greater. And it's greater because of what we get more and more of every day. And until we come to grips that as seen on TV is not good for us, then maybe we'll realize we need to change. Look, I, there was a lot of these networks that were gospel networks and I mean, or, or Christian networks that started out with good intentions. They really did. But when the money went down, the compromise went up. When the funds started going down, the compromise started going down. The first time I've seen that they do now commercials on TBN. They got, they, got, they got advertisers now on TBN. First time I've seen it. Why? Because they had to figure out another a way to get revenue stream. When we stopped giving, they still, well, coming to you live from all these different satellites. That costs money. But... I would rather stay where I'm at and not compromise, Mother Brown, than have a thousand people and then have to throw out the devil every night. That would drive me nuts. So, I'm going to challenge you this month to be your own individual TV guide. I want to challenge you this month to be your own personal TV guide. I, I want you, everybody, I'm going to give you a homework assignment for next week. We're going to talk about it a little bit on Tuesday. Now, next, I want you to do this for all of next week. I want you to, I know some of you say I work too much, I don't even watch TV. You still sneak in something. TV or YouTube or whatever. Look, Facebook's gotten to a point where it's become too much drama. I want you to write down next all of next week chart what you watch this is like we do for our diet see it, this is about intake so if you're watching too much of this then we can say okay let's make an adjustment let's say the hours of maybe x and y you turn it off and turn on praise and worship instead see how you feel at the end of that week versus the week that you just had is there a difference? I'm hoping for a yes. And there should be. And I'll give you an example. My wife encouraged me that uh, while I was in my downtime and in my drive time, in my walk time, to use iHeartRadio as an example of playing gospel music. So when I'm out walking my three miles in the morning, I've got, I've got I heart blowing in my ear all the gospel tunes that I ever wanted to hear and was afraid to ask. But here's what I've noticed in the time that I, it's just like taking in God's word, Deacon Mason. Here's what I've noticed. I wake up singing those songs that I just heard the day before. 
when I'm, I need a song, it's like, I, I, I've got it. I just heard it the day before. Because, see, the more I take in of that, the better off I am. So now it goes, it, conversely, it goes the other way. If I'm taking in everything that's got every, every profanity word known to mankind, guess what you're going to repeat when you get up in the next morning? Everything you just heard. Look, we used to call my baby sister the human tape recorder. I never wanted to take her anywhere, Sister Clarissa, because she always recorded and told my mother. I just learned to shut my mouth and say, oh, we know who's here. Whoop. She would record it, and she was the youngest of all of us, and there's nine years between us. She could record, I mean, to the, like, every millisecond of what I said. And by the time my mother got home, she knew exactly what I did wrong. She knew where I was, what I said, and to who I said it. Well, who told you? You know who told me. And it wasn't Jesus. Oh. At least she told the truth. You know your sister told me. So that's why I have to babysit her. So she can keep tabs on me. Yeah, that was. Thank God we all grew up. But listen, this is your homework assignment. I want you to take the next week and I want you to chart what you're watching. Now, it could be that you don't watch any TV. That's great. That's awesome. What do you watch on your phone? Here's the other part that we'll get into. What conversations are you involved with? Is it all gossip or is it all good? Because that's another part that we don't, take, we don't talk about. All of that feeds into this, which feeds to here. And that's the problem. So... Let's do this. For those that are here, can you stand with me? And for those that are home, bow your heads wherever you are. First, I, I want to talk to that young man or young woman that maybe doesn't know Christ as their Savior. And you really need a change in what you're taking in. Well, the first thing I need you to take in is Christ. Because once you take in Christ, we can do the rest. And we can help you with the rest. And really, it's as easy as this. It's as easy as ABC. First, you've got to admit to God that you're a sinner. Two, you've got to believe the good news. Three, you've got to confess that Jesus is Lord. If you can do all those three things, you can now come under a different rating, and that's called salvation. That's the best rating you're ever going to get is salvation. If you're out there, let me pray with you. Jesus, uh, I, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, and I, I heard what Pastor John had to say, and I've been watching some things, saying some things that I know are wrong now, and I need your help. And I pray that you will forgive me of all these things that I've done wrong so that I can have a new rating called salvation, and I can come under your rating system, which is greatness. Father, I pray right now that you forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness and all the things I've done wrong. And I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've made that decision, I want you to text the word decision to 845-999-6719, and we will get you some information, and we will continue to help you to grow. Well, look, maybe you're sitting here and you're saying, you know what, Pastor, I never really thought about what you were saying until today. You know, I really have to do and watch and monitor what I take in because even sometimes the people I sit with at lunch, I shouldn't be sitting with. Even some of the things that I'm watching on my phone and some of the, you know, what I, what I consider to be funny, maybe it's just a little bit too funny. Maybe I shouldn't take it all in. And, and, and again, I'm not trying to be your rating system. I'm trying to have you rated against God's word. And if you feel a little queasy about it or you don't feel right about it, Maybe it's not, not good for you. Look, you all know what happens if you go to Dunkin' Donuts and you eat a whole dozen donuts by yourself. A, you're going to have a sugar shock. B, you're probably going to put on some pounds. But we don't do that when we measure the intake of what we watch on TV and the movies we watch and the conversations that we, 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 we get involved with. And we're going to talk about conversations next week because as seen on TV, 
is coming back next week to talk about that very thing. If you're out there in need of a prayer, just, just raise your hand. Everybody's eyes are closed. Just raise your hand. If you need prayer, just raise your hand. We see your hands, and we, wherever you are, just raise your hand. Father, right now, you see the hands that are here raised, and we pray, God, that you will touch those that are in need of you. God, they're ingesting, and, they're, and they're, maybe they're just tired. They're worn out. They've gone through so much, but without you, they can't make it. And I really pray today, God, that you will help them organize all that they are going through. God, and I just pray, God, that you will just touch their hearts. We just bleed the blood of Jesus all over these circumstances and situations. And we pray, God, that as we watch what we take in, that we'll be more cognizant of what we put out. Because, God, if we take in light, we will be a light. If we take in darkness, we will be dark. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give your name all the glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can have your seats. Look, we want to help people get better at what they do, and we want to have you help us to get there. So we want you to help us with giving. Well, how can you do that? You got three ways. You can do it through Zelle at give at ftbeacon.org, or you can go to ftbeacon.com backslash give, or you can go to dollar sign ftbeacon. And for that, we want to, we just spent the whole week with this company and they were phenomenal. Look, you want to, we want to give you an item. You want to change what you take in? Here's a great company that can help you do that called Right Now Media. They got over 20,000 Christian videos on everything that you ever wanted to know when you were afraid to ask, all you got to do is text the word FTB into 49775, and you can get your free gift today. If you want to stay connected to us, you can do that by following us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. We'd really, really love to have you, and that way you get notified every time we go live. And our morning prayer, we call it the well. Join us at Monday through Friday from, at 7.30 a.m., and you can join us at 267-807-9605. The access code is 996707. And then we go over to our kids' church. The greatest church in the world is kids' church. You can text kids to 845-999-6719. We go live at 845, and your kids will learn what they should be intaking. It is rated G for God. We thank God for all of you being on today live. And again, we'll be back next week and we'll talk about as seen on TV. And what's your conversations about? Were you talking about last night's ball game? Were you talking about this? Are you talking about that? And who are you talking about it with? And did Jesus ever come up in the conversation? We're going to find out next week as we come back to you live at 1045. Again, my name is Pastor John Perez, along with my wife, Dr. Paula. We are the servant leaders of this time and this season of this place. Remember, we'll be talking about as seen on TV. What's your rating? God bless you. See you next week.